I'm Governor Larry Hogan. Our state is taking unprecedented and aggressive actions in the fight to stop the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic here in Maryland. As you know, I recently issued a stay-at-home directive to ensure that no Marylander leaves his or her home unless it is for an essential job or for an essential purpose. I know how difficult this is on each and every one of you. There's a great deal of fear and anxiety. And the truth is that none of us really know how bad this is going to get or how long it's going to last. But I can promise you that there are a great many dedicated people doing tremendous things, working around the clock, and doing their very best to help keep Marylanders safe. In the days to come, we're going to need to depend on each other, to look out for one another, and to take care of each other, because we are all in this together, and we will get through this together. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Friday, April 10th, 2020. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. The Annapolis Police Department is investigating a second home invasion in the Bay Ridge Gardens apartment complex within the last week. The first one was reported here on April 7th of 2020. This latest incident actually happened the night before. It happened between midnight on April 5th and 1 a.m. on April 6th. The adult female says that several suspects forced open a rear door to the apartment, pushed her into the bedroom, and assaulted her. After that, they did leave the scene. And unfortunately, police don't have any suspects on this one as the victim delayed reporting the crime to the police by a couple days. The plot thickens over at Visit Annapolis. Last night, we were first to report that the Visit Annapolis and Anne Arundel County President and CEO Connie Del Signore had stepped down. She resigned her position effective April 4th. And yesterday afternoon, the organization sent out a statement saying that Connie Del Signor has been placed on administrative leave pending an investigation. According to Visit Annapolis and Anne Arundel County Acting Chairman of the Board Gary Jobson, the leave took effect Friday, April 3rd. This is a personnel matter, and no further information is available at this time. We'll have to see how that haul plays out. County Executive Pittman launched a new initiative yesterday. It was called Thank You Thursday, which is a hashtag, Thank You Thursday. And it's over on his Facebook page And what he's going to be doing is every Thursday is posting somebody that he is thankful for. And he wants people to post who they're thankful for underneath that. The people that get the most likes will win a $75 gift card to a local restaurant for takeout, courtesy of the Anne Arundel County Economic Development Corporation. And to kick it off this week, he thanked the teachers. In the video he posted, he said, Thank you to our educators and to the entire school system for working so hard to continue teaching and learning during this challenging time. And in a conference call a little bit earlier yesterday morning, it gives a clue as to why he might be thanking the teachers. Right now, County Executive Pittman has said that revenues are down $63 million as the economy is taking a little bit of a hit. And he said he would look back on cutting a number of initiatives, including spending in schools. The police department appears also to be taking a hit as well. He has increased the number of law enforcement officers under his watch, but he said that the financial toll of the coronavirus pandemic will have to slow that growth with the police department. The county also agreed to fund $60 million to the Board of Education, which was their approved budget. And he said that's most likely going to have to be reduced to $14.7 million, which is the minimum increase required under the maintenance of effort, which is a state regulation. He did say also that he expects $100 million to flow from the federal government to help ease the pain, but he's not sure when that money can come in, and that money is not able to be used to balance the budget. And balancing the budget, it could be difficult for some people, but for those that are going to be getting a coronavirus stimulus check, you may be seeing that pretty soon. Adults with income below $75,000 are due to receive a $1,200 check within the next few days. Check your account if you've got direct deposit early next week. And it would be a little bit later if you did not file electronically and have a direct deposit for a refund. Some updated statistics on the whole COVID situation here. In Maryland, as of yesterday, 6,185 confirmed cases with 138 deaths. In Anne Arundel County, we actually slipped to fifth place, which is a good thing, with 505 confirmed cases and 12 deaths. As far as the gendered breakout, 46% of the confirmed cases were male, 54% were female, but 
Kind of interestingly, in the number of deaths, 62% were male and 38% were female. The state is also breaking this down by race as well, so that's kind of interesting to see. And as you probably heard on the news all day yesterday, the death rate in the confirmed cases tend to be higher for African Americans. When can we expect to get rid of all this? Well, the IHME, who is tracking all of this, thinks that it's going to be April 17th here in Maryland. This is all based on the number of cases, how it's grown, and what we've done to mitigate it. March 16th, we closed all the educational facilities. March 23rd, we closed the businesses. March 30th, we had a stay-at-home order. And all that put together leads to about eight more days until we see our peak They do also project 1,094 total deaths in the state of Maryland by August 4th. I'm not sure why August 4th is the date, but that's when it is. Hopefully after April 17th, we will start to see the numbers go down, which should be a good thing. We always like to end on a good note with the Daily News Brief, and this one's kind of fun. County Executive Stuart Pittman unveiled the new Open Arundel website, which is a magnifying glass into county programs, initiatives, and demographics. It focuses on seven main topic areas, the COVID-19 virus, budget, open performance, which can look at departmental performance measures, demographics, so you can explore all the demographics in the county population, maps and GIS apps, Open data, so you can explore from 12 different interest areas like education, environment, planning, public safety, and more. And land use information, so you can check out the infrastructure zoning and development. Kind of a cool little website that he's added. And this is coming back on a promise that he made when he was campaigning to be a little bit more open and transparent. You can check that out at aacounty.org slash openarundle. And it is Friday. We are still under a stay-at-home order, so there's not a whole lot going on this weekend. Get out onto a trail. Get out into a park. Enjoy the weather. But if you are the political type and you want to be the next delegate for District 30A, you can get your resume into the Anne Arundel County Democratic Central Committee by midnight on Saturday. Yes, you too can be the next delegate selected by the Central Committee to represent Anne Arundel County. All right, that does wrap it up for us today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we're going to update these stories and more. If you're someplace you can give us a rating or a review, please do that as well. And make sure you let your friends and family and colleagues know about us and how to download the podcast, how to subscribe and get it delivered right to their phone. That would be much, much appreciated. Okay, other than that, hang tight. We have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast. He's coming up in just one minute. But first, This message from Solar Energy Services. Hello, Marylanders. This is Rick Peters, president of Solar Energy Services in Millersville, Maryland. First, I'd like to recognize Governor Larry Hogan and County Executive Stuart Pittman for their leadership through this pandemic as we all continue to adjust to new norms in these challenging times. To be sure, we'll come out of this situation with some permanent changes to our way of life, including the possibility of a greater commitment to a more holistic and sustainable lifestyle. Because of that, Maybe now is a good time for you to start thinking about your energy future, including a shift to solar for your home or business. Fortunately, Solar Energy Services utilizes interactive technology tools that allow us to continue to do business safely while providing detailed, accurate presentations and proposals from a distance. So don't hesitate to schedule a free solar design with us today at 410-923-6090 or visit us at solarsaves.net. Sunshine's a-wasting, but together... We'll get through this. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Friday, April 10th. Yesterday brought more showers and storms in both the a.m. and p.m. hours again across Anne Arundel County with tons of wind as well with gusts near 50 miles per hour for many throughout the afternoon and evening hours. And winds will remain gusty again today with steady winds of 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting to 40 plus miles per hour at times with much cooler high temps in the 52 to 58 degree range, despite plenty of sunshine with a similar setup for Saturday, though winds will likely only gust to 20 to 25 miles per hour at the most. And temps will be slightly warmer as well in the upper 50s to lower 60s, with Sunday now looking like it'll bring high temps of 65 to 70 degrees, with rain showers likely holding off until middle to late p.m. hours, lasting into Monday with another chance of showers and thunderstorms and very warm temps of 75 to 80 plus degrees before another cold front moves through from the west and drops temps on Tuesday down to near 60, with late Tuesday into early Thursday possibly seeing more rain with highs Wednesday and Thursday only upper 50s to lower 60s. 
Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great weekend out there. Do all you can to stay healthy and be safe. And be sure to get our app on all of your devices by searching DCMDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at DMVWeather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Hi, this is Brian Griffiths, the founder of Maryland Podcast Month. Maryland Podcast Month was founded in 2018 to draw attention to all of the great podcasts and podcasters here in Maryland. And during this time of social distancing, there is no better time to start learning more about locally produced podcasts. Shows like my podcast, Red Maryland Radio, Eye on Annapolis, the Conduit Street Podcast, JB's Drive-In Podcast, the Maryland Crabs, Quality Time, the Society Fringe Players, and more are still putting out fresh content. Visit MarylandPodcastMonth.com to learn more about these great Maryland podcasts. That's MarylandPodcastMonth.com. And we thank you for your support of local content. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, IonAnnapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.